Hello guys, welcome back to Deciding How to Decide. Try to go back to your student days. Do you remember your reaction when you received a grade for a test? When the grade you received was good, you thought or said that it was the result of studying hard or because you were smart. It was all about you, right? When you received a bad grade, you blame it on the teacher not explaining the class well, an unfair or difficult test, or things outside your control. It was about everybody and everything except you. Why do we blame external factors for our mistakes or bad results? Why do we take all the credit when we achieve success or get good results? There is an explanation. Today, in deciding how to decide, we will talk about the self-serving bias. And what exactly is it? The self-serving bias is the tendency to take credit for positive events or outcomes, but to blame outside factors for negative events. Now, let's see some examples. If we have a car accident, we usually blame the other party for causing the crash. After a failed meeting with a potential client, we blame our competitor's dirty business practices for not closing the deal. A job applicant believes he didn't receive a job offer because the interviewer didn't understood him or was against him. If he was fired, he will say the same about his previous boss. When our football team loses, many times we blame it on bad calls by the referees. What do we hear from the managers or owners of companies that fail? Bad economic conditions, fishy competitors, bad regulatory environment, lack of adequate financing, or bad luck. They point to the outside, to things out of their control. Do you agree that we usually see ourselves in a positive light? A basketball player makes a basket to win the game and he attributes it entirely to his skills, discounting the role of luck and that of his teammates. What do we hear from managers or owners of successful companies about the reason for their success? We hear words like vision, passion, work, excellence, creativity, teamwork, which other? Many times these words transform into books with recipes for success while they point to the insight. My team and I are the reason for the success. And why does it happen? The self-serving bias is a psychological defense mechanism. We have the need to keep and enhance our self-esteem. We protect it from threat and injury. Therefore, we don't miss chances to take credit for our successes. It makes us feel bigger. And we avoid taking blame for our failures. That can make us feel smaller. If you're playing baseball and you strike out, believing that the umpire unfairly called the strikes is a coping mechanism. It allows you to keep the idea that you're a good hitter. Second, we also want to project and preserve a good image towards the rest of the world. Our survival instincts push us to do this. It's good to have friends and allies here and there to help us in good times and in bad times. And for that, a favorable image is important. If you want to keep a good image among your colleagues, you might blame not reaching the sales objectives of the company to the shortcomings of the marketing office or everybody else except yourself. Do you think culture plays any role into the self-serving bias? It's still being studied, but the self-serving bias might be more prevalent in individualistic cultures where protecting the self from feelings of failure is important than in collectivistic cultures. You may be asking why this is important and what can we do about it? The self-serving bias is important because it's everywhere. It occurs in many contexts like work, consumer behavior, sports, international relations, and basically everywhere where there are teams. This bias can push team members to blame each other, to bad relations, and to failure. So, being aware of what really causes success and failure is important. Fooling ourselves won't take us anywhere. Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist, used to say, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. 
Bad results will probably repeat if we don't understand what really cost them and what was our contribution. Good results won't repeat much if you don't understand what you did right and what was out of your control. Now, a disclaimer. Remember, this video is not the last word regarding the self-serving bias. Its goal was to ignite your interest in this topic so you do your own research. For example, do you think self-serving bias occurs more when teams are big or small? Send us your feedback so we can continue this conversation. Time to go. See you next time. Thank you.